stop apologizing for what you want. You want what you want because you want it. And just like oxygen, there is no lack of money. There's no lack of opportunity to have a better house. We just have to get better, right? And anyone who has more, they've done the work to get better. And so stop apologizing. This is Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast where we ask the question, what does growth in dentistry mean to you? I'm Steve Jensen, a data dental nerd and your host. Welcome everyone. I am super excited about our episode today. Now, before we get started, as always, for those that are new listeners, welcome to the podcast. This is the Growth in Dentistry podcast, where we focus on growing our dental practices, growing our teams, and growing ourselves. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the podcast. It helps us get more listeners, get more engagement. So do that, please. It's a huge help to us. And as always, I like to give a quick shout at the beginning to these. It's a lot of work to produce a podcast week after week after week. And I like to shout out the marketing team at Dental Intelligence for helping. I just get to come and do these recordings and then I just hand them off and they do all the stuff in the background. And I'm so grateful for them for doing all of the hard work to get these produced and out there to the market so you guys can enjoy and learn. So a huge thanks to them. And as they would want me to tell you, if you haven't checked out Dental Intelligence in a while, they offer a $50 gift card just for jumping on, checking it out. If you haven't checked it out in a while, they released a lot of really cool new features uh, from like a full payments, RCM solution, uh, insurance claims management, where you can submit them through us, as well as some new analytics features around scorecards and customizability to get the view you need for your team. So if you haven't checked it out, totally check it out. Now, I'm going to jump in. I always like to get here fast to our guest for today, Dr. Anissa Holmes. I freaking love Anissa. So Anissa, I'll give a little background on you and then I'll, I'll let you speak for yourself. So welcome first Anissa to the show. Thank you for having you me. Say hi. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys about Anissa and why I love her. Um, I'm selective about who I have on the podcast. I want I want everyone that joins to be like a provable voice. There are so many voices out there trying to tell people how to grow your dental practice and what are the best practices. And I want every voice that's on the show to be data-driven and provable from a metrics perspective. And what I would love about Anissa that a lot of people don't know is that she was heavily involved in the early stages of dental intelligence. Like she was the voice, she was, so just for context, she graduated from dental school 25 years ago. So she's not new to the scene. And she was doing her practice and already had built systems of measurement and accountability. And as she worked with Weston, she was highly influential in deciding what actually goes into the software. What should teams look at in order to get extraordinary outcomes? Most coaches, when they think about um, performance improvement and measurement are talking about, you know, how can we get to like, you know, a six figure income for the dentist or multiple six figures. And Anissa is talking like, no, how can we get to like seven figures of income? And how can we really like crack this? Maybe I'm like touting you way too much, Anissa, but she is just incredible at, at not just the business of dentistry, but clinically, as well as her mind around marketing. Like she, if you go look at her LinkedIn and just go follow her on social media, you'll see like this woman has invested in herself in the biggest, coolest ways. And we are long overdue to have you on the podcast. So I'll stop there. I'll stop like stroking your ego, Anissa, and I'll get you talking so that the listeners can learn from you. So welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so, so much for having me. And uh, I've actually just had my my 50th birthday and I, I got a little toy poodle and she's calling for mama. So I'm going to pick her up and have her sit on my lap for the podcast yeah. that's okay with you. <laughs> oh, that's perfectly fine. I'm a, I'm, say, a, I'm a big Nola dog lover. say hi. This is Nola. She's my toy poodle. So. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up, Nola? Welcome to the party. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. And, uh, you know, absolutely right. I have been um, a huge fan of DI um, from early days. And it's because, as you said before, my practice was all about analytics. How do we reverse engineer getting where we want to go, right? How do we strategize, right? And so for me, I don't see a practice working without data, without analytics. Otherwise, you're just kind of in flow getting what you get. And so, uh, yeah, super excited to be on today. <laughs> I'm excited to have you. Now, here's here's where I want to go with you because of the way that your mind works. So the, fir the first thing, uh, 
you shared something with me. You said, hey, like people need to stop apologizing for what they actually want out of their practice. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like, what, what do you mean? Because I, I agree with you. So riff on that with me for a little bit. Yeah, you know, so it's, it's really interesting because I talk about how to increase profits, right? Like that's my topic. Mm -hmm. How do you make more money in your business, right? And the reality is that there's a lot of shame around making more money. And oftentimes it's actually not even our fault, right? Like mm -hmm. if you look at where did that come from? I don't know, you know, if you came from that family, but a lot of people's family or their parents said, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, right? And so mm -hmm. when you went and asked for that opportunity to go to that trip for the baseball team and they said money doesn't grow on trees, all of a sudden you get this shame around like, oh, my gosh, you know, I don't want to ask for things. Right. And so I don't know if that's where it started for, for many people, but oftentimes there's this sort of like apologies like, you know, I, I can't I want to make more money, but I can't really tell people. Right. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that I tell doctors when I when I talk to them is like, stop apologizing. Right. When yeah. I talk to teams, I coach teams as well. I'm like, stop apologizing for what you want. You want what you want because you want it. And just like oxygen, there is no lack of money. There's no lack of opportunity to have a better house. We just have to get better. Right. And anyone who has more, they've done the work to get better. And so stop apologizing. Right. And the reality is that the more money that we make, the bigger impact that we can make. And the reason why we want more, I truly believe, is that we want, and everybody wants this, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a team. So when a doctor's like, oh, she just wants to make more money. My team wants more money. I'm like, yeah, because just like you, they want to be able to put their kids in better schools. They want to be able to buy a better home. You know, I talk to team members and they're like, all I want to do is get out of the house with my parents because I've got my kids there and my brother's living there and he's got, a lot of people that are coming into the house, mm -hmm. right? And so like not really apologizing is just about like, let's put ego aside, right? Like let's yeah. put it aside and let's just say, if we want to have more, we work as a team. And, you know, as one of my team members said, who I met him, he's actually on my on my video team. He helps me with my marketing and different things. And he, he follows and he travels with me and all of the things now. And I'm like, you know, thank you so much. And when I met him, he was working at CBS. He was working one day a week with me. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, you know what? We're going to we're gonna build this thing. And we're going to have, you know, more videos for Delivering Well and Dental Flicks. And I've got an agency, a marketing agency, Digital Floss. And like, eventually we'll have enough business where you can come full time. And I want to retire you from CBS. Mm -hmm. And it happened in a year. Like we reverse engineered him coming out of CBS. And at the end of it, He's so amazing for me. And I'm like, Chris, you're so amazing. And he's like, Anissa, we all we got. And all we got is us, <laughs> right? So how do we build practices where the doctors and teams say, we all we got, all we got is us. Like, let's get our businesses better. Let's put aside ego. Let's stop making excuses. And let's just get better. Let's look at data. Let's look at numbers. Let's put in systems. And let's work together to be able to help more people, heal more people, and when we do, what's going to happen is more patients are going to say, yes, I want you to help me. And then there'll be more profits. And every quarter now the doctor can take those profits and they can make money babies and put it into real estate and all sorts of mm -hmm. things. And team members can have the ability to do the same thing, right? Let's do that instead, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that. In fact, why don't I, that just like sparked a few thoughts to me, like some industry metrics. So for context for everyone, like what can we do to remove the guilt? So on average, this last year, I just pulled up a, a few stats so I could share them. On average, this last year, doctors and a, the average dentist who's diagnosing, let's say they diagnose a million dollars, only 39% of that dentistry is actually getting completed. So we can even just talk about like that alone. Yeah. I'm going to assume that doctors in general are diagnosing like actual needed treatment and there's not a whole lot of bloat there, right? And so- just that fact alone, like we could go from 39% to the top providers in the industry are getting 59% of the dollars they're diagnosing completed. Like just, just improving our case dollars accepted by 20% will have a dramatic impact on earnings, right? So for context, let me say that. Let me say that with dollars. Two same doctors, both diagnosed a million bucks in dentistry. An average dentist is going to get $390,000 in collections knocked out. The top performing doctor is going to get five hundred and ninety dollars in collections. I'm not same same number of patients, right? 
same amount getting diagnosed. And I would argue that the one that's got the better case acceptance, that's the one that's and making more money. That's the one that's doing better clinically by the patients, right? Because it's getting more of them taken care and of. And to be honest with you, that's the person that is healing more trauma. Yeah. That is the person that's helping people feel more loved, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is that once we have the data, the data is what alerts us to say, you know what? What's the issue? Why are we not? doing more dentistry? Is it our clinical competency for C, right? Mm -hmm. If we're like, no, 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 it's clinical competency is great. The second competency is communication competency. And so oftentimes we think, oh, it's cash competency. Patients can't pay. No, we haven't yet gotten a yes, right? And so, yeah, mm -hmm. learning how to ask those questions, like what are your goals of your teeth, your mouth, and your smile, right? And what else and anything else? And if I could give you permission to just share, right? And somebody says, you know, you know, I, I don't like to look at my smile. Can you share with me how you feel when you smile? I feel ashamed. Do you want me to help you so that you no longer feel shame? Well, the answer is yes, you see. And so oftentimes we just go to, this is what you need. You mm -hmm. know, my dad needed dental work and he had a chip tooth on his partial. And I'm like, dad, go chip that, go get the, the chip fix. All he wanted to do was like love on his daughter and so he went to the dentist and they were like, oh, you have all of this other work. And he's like, I don't want to do all that stuff. He didn't, he didn't value it. He valued my love. And he's like, I'm not doing all of that. But my dad has had a bout of cancer, cancer. I know his medical history. So I'm like, dad, what do you value most? Is it your health? I already knew the answer, you see? Yeah. And so the answer was yes. And I said, well, the only way you're going to get healthy is if you do the work that they recommended. And then he said, yes, right? So yeah, absolutely. The data gives us the information of what we need to focus on in our training, right? So it could be case acceptance. It could be that we have people leaving without a future appointment. It could be that we have um, our AR. I hear that all the time too. Oh, she, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Like she let our insurance credentialing um, lapse or she didn't. And I'm like, oh, that's just because you didn't have a school card yet. Because if you had a scorecard and you had a weekly process that once a week you were reviewing it as a part of your weekly meeting, number one, you would no longer be sticky noted because your team now has time to get your quality time once a week. But number two, every week on a Tuesday morning, because on Monday the scorecard card, you know, is filled out or on a Tuesday morning or even a Monday morning, right? If you're using DI, you have the scorecards there, then now you can go in and you can have the conversation and know that something's wrong and you can say, what's the issue? Oh, I don't know. Let me check. Now you have a solution. I don't understand, honestly, why practices have an AR issue. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why the hygiene reappointment percentage is not 97%. I don't. Now, before I started using uh, DI, honestly, you know, this was back years ago, it was in the 70s or 80s. And then all of a sudden I'm like, what? You know, we need a system for that. Right. And mm -hmm. so we created a system for that. And now, unless somebody's a college student who's home for spring break, it doesn't make sense why they don't have a next appointment. And now it's 98 percent. Right. So uh, the data dictates the things that we discuss in the meeting that we solve by a system. Right. So the system holds us accountable, not blaming she or he. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we're getting, we're starting to get into some meat. So I'm going to, I'm going to level set a little bit. So let's say like, we're talking, we're talking about some metrics. We're talking about some different meeting. We're talking about some scorecard strategies. So let's, let's say this, Anissa first, cause I want to, I want to come into this like practical stuff, the stuff you started to just talk about, but first, yeah. so we kind of opened with this idea that we, we can um, stop apologizing for what we really want. So let's say, you know, I'm listening to this and I'm like, okay, Anissa, like I want to like, really level up my practice. Uh, I want to maybe, I don't know if it's double production. I want to, I'm a single doctor with two hygienists and I want to add an associate and add another hygiene column or two hygiene columns. Like, where do you, where do you first think about starting? Like, how do you diagnose the business and, yeah. and kind of backwards engineer into the growth? And then talk to me about some of the kind of systems you put in place or a, a few tips that are like really helpful for doctors as they're approaching this. Okay. Like how do I actually approach my, you know, growth in my business? Yeah. So it's really all about reverse engineering, right? So if you say, I want to grow by a million dollars in revenue a year, or even a million in profit, right? Like if whatever mm -hmm. your goal is, right? 
everything is reverse engineerable. And the reality, and just so you understand, for those who have not yet really started to think about selling your practice, or maybe you're thinking about selling your practice, or one day you might sell your practice, the reality is that when we start looking at the purchase price, what's really interesting is an increase in only $100,000 of profit or EBITDA it's not $100,000 that you'll make when you sell, right? Like if you can increase your profits by, you know, $300,000, that becomes almost a million to well, $1.5 million more that you will make when you exit. Some people are trying to sell their practice and they realize it's not sellable because they don't have much profits. And so just focusing on a strategy for profits, that's not production, that's not collection. It's production, mm -hmm. it's collection, right? Great. Might as all expenses, and that's your profit, right? So if you make lemonade, you have a lemonade stand. I teach this to teams, right? The sugar, the cups, and the ice. We didn't make $17 today to buy that right, <laughs> right doll. We made $3, right? And so how we reverse engineer the system that we have uh, in place that I created first for my practice, and now I work one-on-one -on -one with every doctor um, that we work with in our coaching program is literally this. And we, we do have... Um, we have an Excel sheet. Yes, we do. Right. Um, so what we do there is we look at the past 12 months. I want to know what service is giving the most revenue in the practice. Is it restorative? Is it preventive? I want to know the best month of the year. Was it in October? Why? What did we do? Oh, we did four more clear aligner cases. Oh, that's interesting. But the other months we did zero or we did one. Why? Well, maybe just because we weren't tracking it. Right? We just got what we got. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Uh, is there anything else that you want to learn how to do? Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to learn how to do sleep. Great. So in the first quarter, we're going to focus on clear liners. And while we're doing that, you're going to take a course on sleep. How much do you want to grow by? Oh, I want to get this. Okay, great. What are services you don't like to do? Right? Oh, well, I don't do endo. I don't do, um, I want to do this or that. Great. Right? Well, maybe we can look at bringing in an associate in Q3. Right? So that's a strategy. Right? Or maybe you don't want to do sleep in your practice. Do you like, I don't want to do that. Or I don't want to in my practice. I was like, I don't want to do clear aligners. Let me bring in an associate so that we can offer the service. Right. And so it's all about strategy. And then once we do that, then now we can cash flow forecast and say, okay, well, what if we focused on it? What if we only did two clear aligners for month one, month two, month three? And then in month four, we did a clear aligner day. And then month five, we did now four cases and then four cases and then five, and then five, then six. Is that doable? And the doctor's like, yeah, of course, it's just one more or two more each month. Great. Well, what would be the revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And then now we see what the revenue would be. Okay, great. Well, in Q2, we're going to start, you know, pediatric sleep appliances because those are easier to get started with. Okay, how much you're going to charge, right? So, so then we go, okay, we're going to do two cases and then three, right? And then at the same time, we're teaching the verbal skills and all the things and the marketing that goes along with it, right? But at the end of the day, within one strategy call, the doctor's like, oh my gosh, now I see it. I have a roadmap. Yeah. This is actually doable. Wow, I can actually grow by, and it depends on the practice, you know, but typically 40 to 50%, if not 80 to 100%, if they follow that. And then we need accountability to, to follow it, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and that data, what we're looking for is production, right? But not just production, production by service. So again, I want yep. to know how much revenue per service so we can look at, look at patterns and trends, right? And then what we do yeah. is we take data and then we put it on a whiteboard so we can look at daily in our huddle. Again, we've got to have the analytics. I don't want my team fishing for data, right? <laughs> so that's why I'm like, go, you've got to have analytics software, right? So now it takes your team members five minutes, three minutes to get the data and you're able to track the services daily that correspond with the strategy of what you've done for the year. And that's what holds you accountable. The tool holds you accountable. Again, if you don't hit the goal, what's the issue? Is it clinical? Oh, we need to go back and take another ortho course. So maybe my team needs it. Oh, no, no, we're good with that, Doc. Is it communication? Patients are saying, yes, what's the issue? We have to have a plan for them to put it into our budget. So everything's strategic. You know, the systems add the force accountability. And, you know, I know we've spoken about this before. What is that? You know, like when we're kids, our kids, mm -hmm. our parents are like, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, right? <laughs> you know, your seatbelt, right? And then all of a sudden we become an adult. And the question is, are our parents telling us to brush our teeth? Of course not, right? And it's because yep. they were the forced accountability. And so when we use whiteboards, that's backed by data that is matched to a strategy, right? 
and we use scorecards to look at all of the other analytics on a weekly basis, right? And we look at the last three weeks when we're setting up our scorecards and the middle number of the last three weeks is your goal. And then now that becomes your goal. And once you hit it three weeks in a row, again, you choose the middle number becomes a new goal. And then all of a sudden, incrementally, you keep getting stronger. Just like if I'm going to the gym every week, I'm going to get stronger. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're a million dollar practice or 5 million, this process is going to get you more profits, more EBITDA, more happiness, right? Because mm -hmm. then you can ultimately... If you're doing it right, you've got a manager who's running the business and team members who are being trained and they're taking things off your plate as well. So yeah, that's that's what it's all about. <laughs> I mean, that's that's so good. I'm like sitting listening to you and like I like had I had like 15 doctors flash before my mind. Like it's such a common story for a doctor to say, Hey, like I want to invest in myself clinically, which is awesome. So many doctors will spend so much time and effort and thought there. So they'll take clear liner courses. They'll buy the iTero. And then after that, the execution falls off, right? Like the struggle is, okay, I know clinically what I'm doing, or maybe they'll take an implant course. But then when you talk about getting the right volume of that procedure, all of a sudden they, there's a struggle to know like exactly what to do, Anissa. And I love that you just outlined this like wonderful system of accountability. So if you guys didn't like catch it, like go back and re-listen <laughs> to what Anissa just said, because it's like absolute gold. And that was, hey, if we want to backwards engineer ourselves to a goal, we want to go look at all of the procedures we're doing and which ones are, how profitable are each one? How much are we doing in collections? Like, where did we get big wins? And then let's hone in on probably one. I don't know, Anissa, what do you think? Like, do you just hone in on kind of one, one at a time? So like one, one circle of fo focus per quarter. And the circle cool. of focus is not based on what your consultant tells you you need to do. Yeah. It's based on what you love to do, what you're good at, right? Cool. So. I, you know, it's always like, what do you want to do tomorrow? But what do you love to do? Whatever you love to do becomes your focus in Q1, but you really focus on it. You focus on it with looking at it daily. You focus on it with your verbal skills training with your team. You focus on it with how patients are going to be able to fit it into their budget. You fit it, you know, you focus on it with your, your marketing. Again, like even a whiteboard, just holding your team accountable to having a conversation, right? So you do that and then Q2 now that should be a habit by then you've got mm -hmm. it figured out and that's the whole like, like brush the teeth thing yeah right the Q2 is like, all right what's emotion? the next quarter yeah. what are we focusing on and then now it just stacks right and then eventually it's like oh this is easy everybody's saying yes to this procedure or now our marketing is working right so yeah it's all about strategy and again like the beauty of it is that it's not just about how do we grow our practice for today, because at some point we're going to want to retire, exit, sell. Some people are in mm -hmm. the business now of, you know, building up EBITDA and then now, you know, selling and then taking that and then rinsing, repeating and building DSOs, even as, you know, not necessarily as private equity, as private equity, but also as independent dentists who see themselves more as entrepreneurs. And so mm -hmm. being able to get a practice, get then two locations or three locations or even the one and learning how to use data to increase your EBITDA. Again, if you have three locations, you increase it only by 200,000. Like that is huge, guys. Mm -hmm. Like that. That gets into the millions um, in terms of extra uh, revenue or, uh, uh, that you will have at the end of the day. And what are you going to do with that? You know, you're going to make sure that when you are aging, that you're all right, that you can take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. At some point, your eyes and your hands are not going to work anymore, right? And so how are you going to feed yourself? How are you going to feed, you know, your, 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 you know, take care of your kids? My kids are in college right now. You know, my daughter got into Middlebury in Vermont. She got full scholarships everywhere else except for Middlebury, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, mom, you know, but I got in. 3% of the uh, students get in. She's doing neuroscience there. She said, mom, I got in. I said, well, you did the work. So guess what? I'm going to have to find the money, right? I don't apologize for saying yes to my daughter. I don't apologize to helping my, my father with his dental bill. Like, I, you know, we have to stop apologizing and knowing that it's okay to want more so that we can love people. Like some people use people to make money. I say make money to love the people. And so that's really what it's all about um, is just really loving people more, loving your team more, changing their lives, right? We all, we got, all we got is us. We've got to get better. We've got to get training. 
We've got to learn not just the clinical side. We've got to learn how to run the company. You know, we would never go in the first day of opening our practice and say, let me just figure out how to do this filling on you today, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Jones, right? And so, um, you know, unfortunately, that's what happens on the business side. But it's okay. That's how it goes. Um, and once you know more, then you can do more. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate you, you know, having me here. Um, <laughs> You're the best. Hey, let me, let me say bit. this about... Let me say this about teams. I want to make a call out too. Like uh, you, you talked about like just honing in on, on like one thing, you know, maybe that's aligners or implants or all in fours, whatever it is you're like honing in on. What, what I love about that too, Anissa, is then it gives so much clarity to the team. Like you said, it will like make the team's life better. And it absolutely will. Like if the team knows, hey, this is what's important to doc right now. And they know what success looks like. Then all of a sudden, you know, front office team is talking about that procedure more. Or the marketing messages, you know, internal marketing that they're doing or ground marketing that they're doing. Like we can start to really just align everyone's behaviors around one thing. And then when there's that kind of focus, it creates momentum for people where they can start to see successes and measure successes. Like it's just such a such a great way to run the business. And so sometimes accountability can feel like it's this like negative top down thing. But in reality, it's kind of this like groundswell oh, of momentum so that's so fun. It's so beautiful, Steve. So I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Uh, he wrote 10X is easier than 2X, the gap and the gain, the who and not mm. the how. He's actually going to be doing a multi-hour workshop at our Delivering Well Summit, which is a doctor and team um, event in June in Fort Lauderdale. Which, by the way, it. everyone, yeah. everyone go to this thing, okay? It's a <laughs> yeah. powerhouse of speakers. Go to it. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, we'll so, throw the so, link in the show notes for it. Absolutely. Delivering Well Summit. But Dr. Ben Hardy, right, he's a neuroscientist. And he says that 10xing everything is always easier than 2xing because only a few things actually will allow you to 10x. What does that mean? So his son plays tennis, right? And so the the the, the coach says, the high school coach says, do you think that you can play college? And his son says, I think so. You know, he's a pretty good coach. Pretty, pretty good tennis player. And his dad, being the neuroscientist, says, well, do you think you could go pro? And his, his son's like, dad, pro? Like, not me. Like, everybody, I could never go pro. And then his dad said, well, what if, what if, what if we hired the coach that everyone that he coaches from high school goes pro? Do you think that you could do it? Right? Mm -hmm. And you're shaking your head, right? Yes, of course. Right. So that's a 10x. Because when you 10x, that means that you can stop doing 80% of the things that you're doing, right? So he could probably stop thinking about the SAT and ACT and what college he's going to apply to. He'd probably stop thinking about college or even high school. Like, mm -hmm. like if all he did was hire that coach, he could go pro. That's a 10x. 10x means that you stop doing 80%. You only do 20%. A 2x, which is what we've done, and we've done a 10x in my own practice, right? A 2X means that you keep 80% and you only change 20. So if all you did was just implement what I share today, using the data to be able to implement scorecards, using the whiteboards, right? Reverse engineering, having a strategy. That alone, when we implemented scorecards in my practice, is why after 20 years of clinically practicing, I retired and I walked into my practice and I said, how was how was December? At that point, I was already consulting and I had taken the, the month off to be with my kids to travel in December. And they said, oh, well, we doubled doctor production per visit in week 13 of this quarter. And our collections was why. And that was told to me not by my manager, but by my scheduler. I was like, all right, well, I have permission so to retire, right? But we doubled our profits, not production, we doubled it, not once, not twice, but like three or four years, just because we use the data and the tools that I'm sharing, we doubled. And then once we put in a manager, once we put in multiple doctors and we created mastery of those same systems, but with a manager and multiple doctors, now me as an owner was able to 10X. That means 10X more time and 10X more income, right? And so the reality is that you don't have to do like hard work doesn't work. It doesn't mm -hmm. like our, our parents said, go get an education. You'll be wealthy, go work hard. And then all of a sudden we do that and we're still not wealthy. We're, people are still on a mm -hmm. struggle bus, tired, and exhausted. So clearly that doesn't work. Right. And so the reality is hard work doesn't work. It just makes us more tired, it just makes us more tired. And so we mm -hmm. have to figure out like, what are those pieces? And I've shared today, like, 
you know, it's really having the forced accountability systems. And when we do, the systems hold us accountable. And that's the beauty of it. Now, two, two things here. I love that. Two things. Yeah. Uh, one, the first is I'm going to give like a little self, like a selfish plug for Anissa that she didn't ask me to. The second one is, Anissa, I'm going to have you answer the question that we ask every guest. And that is, what does growth in dentistry mean to you? But let me give this plug first and then I'll have you answer. So everyone that's listening, you're probably sitting there thinking like, I, I would love to see this scorecard. I would love to like connect data with some training because some of you might not feel like totally confident like what do I train my team members to do and and this hasn't mentioned this and I didn't either I totally forgot to but and this has started a platform called dental flicks so definitely go check it out it's amazing because the idea behind it I absolutely am obsessed with and that is hey there are so many experts out in the industry that teach on their expertise that can measurably improve numbers and then there's companies out there that are giving numbers and have expertise around how to measure them and no one has done a great job at connecting those two dots so in Dental Flix, it gives you the ability to have all of the training you need from all from tons of industry experts that this has been sourcing. And then it connects it to these scorecards that she's talking about. This ability to like actually look at data to decide, okay, like where are we going to apply ourselves? Where are we going to learn? So definitely go check out Dental Flix. She just got that started. I think it's been like 10 months or maybe like almost a year. And it's like freaking awesome. So so go check that out. And um, I'll put a little link in the show notes to Dental Flix as well. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Anissa. What does growth in dentistry mean to you? Yeah, you know, so it's interesting. I used to think that growth in dentistry meant uh, that we would grow in revenue, our businesses would grow. Mm -hmm. um, but in this season of where I am right now, you know, again, 25 years of, of, of being a dentist, um, you know, almost a decade in, in coaching dentists. Um, now I've got, you know, a marketing agency, Digital Floss, and now Dental Flakes, right, which is online education for everyone, right? Um, it Growth really, to me, um, means evolving, right? Like evolving to a place where we really take up our assignments of what's been given to us to be able to heal and help people, right? Like to me, growth is letting go of ego. It's building relationships. It's, it's saying, you know, I'm sorry when you've made mistakes, um, it's it's really looking at, again, how can you build a legacy um, in your community, right? Or a legacy in, in your, your family's um, lives or your team's members' lives. It's like, how do we grow personally? And we use mm -hmm. dentistry as a vehicle. And so I'm just so grateful. Like, I love dentistry. Like, just looking at even still, like, what's happening with my team members and my dental practice and how they're growing and really just changing lives. It's a beautiful profession. All the people that I've met along the way, you know, including yourself and so many friends, it's just been great. And so uh, to me, growth is just, is evolving and just making a decision to say yes to your assignment um, and just doing it well. And for me at this season of my life, it's like not keeping all of the things that I've learned to myself, because to me, that's selfish. And so that's mm -hmm. why after using scorecards and developing them. And, you know, we've got our coaching program, our delivering while coaching program. And then I'm like, not everybody needs a coach. Not everybody can afford a coach. Not everybody wants a coach. You know, people have other coaches that they may identify with who work for them, right? So how do we build a platform that allows me to help other coaches and leverage them and their expertise to be able to use data. And so that's what we've been able to do because we've been developing software for nearly a decade um, to be able to help dentists um, and consultants um, and patients all be able to feed their families more. And so that's what it's really all about. Man, that that was such a thoughtful and abundant response. Seriously, thank you so much. And it has been a gift to have you. Well, well, listeners, thank you for joining. It has been another great Growth in Dentistry episode. As always, I'm Steve Jensen, your host. Keep growing.